Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord God has made. Can the people of God rejoice in it? Come on, new psalmist. Why don't you stand on your feet and give the Lord an ovation of praise? Come on, we're in the house. Come on, we've got communion in the house of the Lord. Come on, can we celebrate that? Come on, hallelujah. We're in the third communion of the year. We've come to celebrate Jesus, lift up his name, for he is highly exalted. So we're going to become one big praise team and say, Lord, I lift your name on high. We're going to give him a Jehovah Nisi praise. He is our banner. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Come on, everybody say, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Everybody say, Lord, I lift, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. Aren't you glad? I'm so glad you came to save us. Come on, you say it again. Lord, I lift your name on high. Let me brag about it. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Let's tell that story. Everybody say you came to show the way from the earth, my death to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave. Say it again. 
say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. Come on, how I love you. How I love you. I really love you. I really Come on, say, love just you. for who you are. Just for who you are. In all of your glory. restoring all the years that the locusts have eaten. He's given back to us what two years seem to have taken away from us. Here we are in the season of Lent, able to gather together Persons are sharing online on the online campuses. We're in the building. I still hear Sister Barbara Earl, Anthony, in our first meeting. Clara, Mary, Deaconess, Deacons, you remember. Barbara said, I don't know if I'll ever be able to get back to my church. Oh, but we praise God. He is a way maker. I look around and I see folk I haven't seen in a while. 
If this is your first time back in a while, give me a wave. Give me a wave. Oh, come on, come on, church. Give us a wave. Come on, let's welcome everybody back home. I see some of my young people back, some of my younger people back. We're all back in the Lord's house. We, is that Marion Cook back there? Y'all, this is a special moment. I'm not, I wouldn't dare tell Marion's age, she's not gonna throw that pocketbook up here and hit me. But Marion, I am so glad to see you made it back tonight. Amen. I've known Mary, I've been pastor of this church for 47 years and I've known her at least that long, maybe longer. And she's in this house this afternoon. God is bringing us back, Dale. He's bringing us back to his house, getting us up to coming back getting us feeling, and let me tell you, in case nobody's told you this, your pastor is glad to see you. I wish I could go around and shake every hand, but it ain't that much sanitizer, sanitizer in church. But I want you to know I'm glad to see you, and all of the families that have dialed in, all of the individuals that have clicked in, that are worshiping with us all over. What a mighty God we serve. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. And I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer, closer drawn to thee. Let's open this worship. I am thine, O oh Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. And I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer to
on my knees. Someone asked, why do we gather for this service? Why is it so important? We have Easter, we have Christmas, we have Pentecost Sunday. Why is communion so important? Jesus said to his disciples to do this regularly so that no matter how life is treating you at whatever age you are, you'll never forget that I'm on your side. I like all the teenagers that are worshiping with us either at home or with your friends or in this building. Would you just wave at me wherever you are, teenagers? Just wave at me. God is on your side. With the young adults, wherever you are in this room, on Facebook, on YouTube, on New Psalmist's website, wherever you are, would, would you just wave at me? God is on your side. Can the adults who are climbing up the rough side of the mountain, regardless of age or status, but there's so much you carry in your heart and spirit. Can you just wave at me? God is on your side. In these latter years, one of the greatest blessings I have is to be a spokesman for God. To say to his people, wants them to hear and to tell you God is on your side. I think of these last two years, what we've all been through. I think of what some of you are still going through. I see Angela here who's just had death in her family. I see others here who are taking care of mama and others. God is on your side. As the lights are brought low and before Courtney leads us in prayer, how many of you have a lot of stuff you're trying to juggle? God is on your side. No harm have I done you on my knees, on my knees. No Say it when you say. 
Father, we come first thanking you, Lord, for the opportunity to once again gather corporately and celebrate that which you've done for us. Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice, and we don't take it lightly. Lord God, we pray that you would bless every person under the sound of my voice that you will remove any distraction that they have on their mind, Lord God. We pray for the speaker of the hour, that he would come and bring a message that would stir up something in somebody, that they would hear from you, that they would get the direction they need, and that they would move the way that you would have them to move, Lord God. We pray for our pastor, we pray for our leadership, we pray for this house and this congregation. Lord, we thank you for the favor that rests upon us, and we call it ours and we claim it, and we go forth to do that which you have us to do. Lord God, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, and we bless your name. And we say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. something about being in church. There's something about being in the Lord's house. Officers, thank you for being out in large numbers. Thank you so very much. This is a season when God is doing all things new. Easter, this Lenten season is going to mark a new beginning new opportunities for us. This will be the first Easter service we will have had in three years. Next month's communion service, next month's communion service will be in Holy Week. It'll be on that Thursday night of Holy Week. That Friday we will be in worship and that Thursday night, we will serve the Lord's Supper. God is letting things happen that we couldn't do before. We're going to have a mass baptism as we move toward Easter. We're going to have a mass baptism. I'll give you details on that later. Our diaconate team and other teams are working that out. And there may be individuals who as a result of what we've been through have decided this is the season for you to rededicate your life to Christ. Amen. How many of you have come to know the Lord a lot deeper through all of this? Some who've never been baptized will say this is my season. And we're going to be setting up a way for you to sign up even online to be baptized, to be baptized. You may not have recently joined. Our diaconate is going to be putting together the plan, but we're going to be baptizing people as we get close to Easter. I'm just excited that we're coming off of Noah's Ark. We're coming out the caves. I got to hold my grandchild today. First time since December. Y'all don't get what I'm saying. I got to hold my grandchild today. The first time since December. God is making a way. God is opening some new doors and I need somebody 
to celebrate the opportunities that God is doing. This is a great time to be alive. This is a great time to be alive. Oh my God. Shell, won't you come? We're going to thank God for, for new members, those who are sharing in the virtual space, those who are in this space, be strong. We're not going to shake hands, officers. Be strong, be strong, be strong in the Lord. Thank you, Bishop. Michelle, won't you come over just a little further? Yes. On behalf of Bishop Walter Scott Thomas Sr., Lady Patricia Thomas, officers, members, and friends, we welcome you. We are so excited that you have chosen New Psalmist as your church home. This is a place where you can strengthen your relationship with Jesus Christ. Bishop today talked about when he preached lean in. When he was talking about leaning in, this is a place where you can lean in and let God I wrote that part down, I'm sorry. Um, as Bishop preached today, um, lean in God's direction, exhale and grab your responsibility. God is going to use you. Thank you, welcome home. Come on, give our new members a big hand. They're in the building, they're online. We praise God, come on, let's praise him. we're going to be lifting our offering in a moment. I've asked Brother Austin to play this melody. Be strong in the Lord. Anybody here have a kind of struggle week, a week that kind of hits you kind of hard with a lot of stuff going on this week? Can you wave at me if you had some struggles this week? You and I do not get to pick our problems. God knows I wish I could, I'd go to the dollar store. I'd get them kind, but we don't get to pick them. We get what's dished out to us. But today I'm encouraging you to make a choice, to make a choice of how you'll respond. Don't give the devil the satisfaction of thinking he broke your spirit. Can I see the hands? I know we're doing a lot of hand waving. We can't slap five and talk to folks. So I have to raise hands. Can I see the hands of folk who know you've been through worse than what you're going through? Oh, oh, don't put them down too quick. Remember for a moment, I look around this room and I see folk who've been through hell. I don't even need to add how water. Hell is enough. And guess what? God brought you through. So be strong. Be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Be of good courage for he is your God. Be strong. Be strong. say that again. Be strong, be strong, be strong in the Lord, and be of good courage, for He is your God. Be strong, be strong. thought he was going to defeat you. The adversary thought he was going to stop you. Ha! Huh. God has brought you through too much 
for you to doubt now. He may not come when you want him, but I need about 10 witnesses to declare he'll be right on time. He'll be on time. He'll be on time. Play it for those. that the next chapter will be easy. That the next chapters are going to be smooth. But I will gain. He's on your side. He's on your side. Whatever you face this week, remember, he's on your side. And be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Of good courage. Good courage Cause he is your God. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong in the Lord. And rejoice for the victory. We're going to get ready to give out gifts of love. A lot going on in the church. Our connection groups are signing up and getting ready to meet soon. If you haven't signed up, we have groups for young people all the way, the seniors. We want you to sign up, be a part of the connection groups. Connect with other folk. Get to enjoy what God is doing in the body of Christ. So sign up. All of them are meeting virtually different days of the week so you pick the day you want the group you want to be a part of sign up now and start connecting because God is going to do so much through all of us and the connections that we have I'm celebrating Jesus today because if it wasn't for him we never would have made it through this I need you to thank to help me thank a couple groups today before we lift our offering. I need you to help me thank our officers, our diaconate. I want the diaconate to stand wherever they are, all members of the diaconate. Help me, look at them, look at them out here tonight. I wanna, I wanna personally thank them each one individually and collectively for your amazing support through all that we've been through. It was so good on so many days to be able to get your advice, your counsel, your wisdom, to know you were praying your strength through, to see your faces and to see how you rallied when others needed you. You showed what servant leadership is all about. Thank you so very much. You may have, give them a hand, church. 
There are members of our staff that are here. I want them to stand wherever they are, members of our staff. They're scattered around. They worked overtime, triple time, and every time. We didn't know half the time what we were doing the rest of the time. But God, God hooked us together, held us together, and showed us what to do. And I want to thank you all, all of you, for your help, your support, and the way you let God use you. We have a lot to do, but we're encouraged because we've seen what God can do. We've seen him make a way out of no way. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you so very much. You may give them a hand, church. And one last group to thank tonight, this afternoon service. I'd like all our First Impression team members, wherever you are, I serve. You, those blue shirts you see, I want all of our I serve people, even if you're not serving in this service, to stand wherever you are. Won't you remain standing for a minute? We could not have done what God wanted done without you doing what God, through us, asked you to do. We knew God didn't call us to just do things the way we had. God called us to take on some new challenges. And every Sunday morning, you come in your blue shirt, preachers, diaconate, ushers, mocks, trustees, doesn't matter who you are, communications, administration, you come with one word or one phrase, I serve. And you have helped people feel comfortable coming to New Psalmist Church. I could never have done that by myself. And on behalf of all the leadership, we want to thank you for the marvelous way. Officers, help me thank and appreciate. Come on, let's thank and appreciate members, all of those who serve Sunday after Sunday. Thank you. You may go to your seats. Some of you say, well, I'd like to serve. I'd like to help out. We'd love for you to help. Just go to newsamis.churchcenter.com, newsamis.churchcenter.com, and you'll see a group says, First Impressions. Just go there and sign up, and we'll take it right from there. We'll get you involved right away. All ages, all stages, you're welcome to go to work in New Psalmist. We're getting ready to lift out gifts of love, and there's a preacher in the house tonight. Oh, there's a preacher in the house tonight. Lord have mercy, this is our first communion like this, online, in the building. Oh, we've got about six or 700 people everywhere watching and being a part of worship right now. Somebody praise God for all the people that are worshiping God. Our first offering is our communion offering. Our second offering is our preacher's offering. If you need an envelope, just raise your hand. There's a hand in the back, but we give also online through GiveLify, PushPay, through the New Psalmist website. You can go to the 
Facebook page of New Psalmist and right where it says more, right under our symbol. You can hit that and you can give your offerings there. But we want to give liberally. We want to be a blessing as God has blessed us. Then we'll give our preacher's offering. And I'm going to tell you, we do have a preacher. Get no doubt about it. We do have a preacher in this house. May we all stand. We give our first offering, which is our communion offering. And then we're getting ready to give, then we'll give our second offering and we'll be ready for the word of God. Father, we thank you for the gifts we give. May they be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. We bless your name and give you praise for the offerings that we share. Thank you now, Lord, because you gave it to us and we give back to your work. In Jesus' name, amen. Come, ushers, receive the gifts. When COVID began, the first communion service we were able to do was in the fall of that first year when we were able to ordain some of our preachers. They're here tonight, I see them. That was our first communion. Then last year, we were able to do one service, I think it was, one communion in the building. And here we are now, ready to start our communions. Oh, there's a preacher here tonight. I've known him since he was, oh my God, before he was a preacher. I've known his in-laws even longer than that. I've watched his ministry grow. You know, the Lord has blessed me. Seems like I only know smart preachers. Amen. He's one of the most brilliant preachers around. Um, we talk on the regular. I get so many ideas listening to him. Just fun to be around. There was a time with Joshua, Brother Odell, Damon Hughes, Pastor Reggie and myself were all doing self-defense training. And Reggie could do falls and forward rolls over five and six people in the air. I stayed home that night. I said, ain't no need for a brother to get hurt. Stay on home, keep these joints intact. One day we were on the plane flying and Reggie said, Reggie had gotten injured. Reggie said, my doctor said, Pastor Thomas, at this age, you should be conserving your joints, not breaking them up. I'm about 20 some years, I'm almost 20 years older than Reggie. I said, well, if the doctor told Reggie that it's time for me to quit. I woke up the next morning and the spirit of the living God said, don't fall anymore. And I walked out never to return. He is somebody's preacher, somebody's counselor, therapist, and teacher. His lovely wife, Stephanie, is here right by his side. Amen. My wife and I claim them as ours. I know, I know, Elaine, y'all claim them, but we do too. We claim them as ours. I know Greater Gethsemane, y'all claim them, but we, call, we claim them too. I, I just think the world of them. God is going to use him to preach to us tonight. May we stand. We're going to give our preacher's offering now. I want you to give liberally to the man of God. He's going to bless us tonight. I got a feeling God's got a word to say to him for us. Come on, worship team. Prepare us for the preaching of the gospel. Ushers, you can receive our preacher's gift. Let's give now as our singers prepare us for the word of God. Oh, we bless his holy name today. I'm giving my offering too.
Oh, Greater Gethsemane, we glad to have y'all tonight. Come on, put your hands together for Greater Gethsemane. I know your pastor's glad to see you all. Oh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Y'all know women, y'all not appreciating this. This is the first guest choir we have had in three years. I need somebody to just say, won't he do it? Won't he do it? The first guest choir in three years. Come on, give them a hand as they come to bless us. Y'all sing all you want till your pastor ready for y'all to, pre to preach. Y'all sing on, make us happy in here. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. So good to be in the house of the Lord with you this evening, New Psalmist. Is there anybody that is grateful for the blood of Jesus? Come on, don't fool me. Anybody out there grateful for the blood of Jesus? Thank God for his blood that was shed. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm thankful for the blood. Hallelujah. Anybody know the blood still works? Give, let me raise your hand. If you know the blood still works. If you can't stand to your feet, we're going to give God some praise tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, give me a clap. Oh, what a price he had 
God. We stand in awe of his greatness, amen, and his love for us. It's amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Sing, it's so amazing. It's so amazing. Your love for me.
Come on, there's somebody who's amazed at God's glory, his power, and his strength. If you're amazed at how God has been keeping you and blessing you, go ahead and put your hands together and give our awesome God a worthy praise. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we've come to rejoice and to be glad in it. Can we thank God for the gift and the blessing that we have been giving in Bishop Walter Scott Thomas Sr. Come on, y'all, let's thank God for our bishop. What a phenomenal gift to the body of Christ and to this world. And I am so grateful to God for our friendship, our relationship, for his mentorship. He's my pastor, and I thank God for the way God blesses me and my family through him. And while we're thanking God for him, we've got to give God praise for the phenomenal lady, Patricia Thomas. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's thank God for Lady Thomas. God bless you. Her strength, her reserve. We thank God for just the wonderful way that God uses her. And sometimes she doesn't even know she's being used. And we thank God for the way God has tremendously blessed her. Thank God for the Reverend Joshua Thomas. We thank God for joy. Amen. I saw Wayne in the house. It's all Candace and the crew. It's a pleasure to be with all of you all, to all of the preachers of the gospel, to all of the diaconate, all those who make up the leadership and the fellowship of the New Psalmist Church. It's just a joy to be here. I see Pastor Donald Wright Jr. and Lady Sequoia Wright in the house as well with their twins, and we praise God for them. I'm grateful for the presence of some from the Greater Gethsemane Church. Amen. And our music ministry is here. They've served. And some of our diaconate and preachers and others are here. This is our first afternoon service in over two years on a Sunday afternoon. And I'm so excited and delighted that we get to, to be a part of this communion service and celebration uh, Bishop, Bishop told the story how he and Damon and Joshua and Odell and myself, we would, we would work out together uh, practicing uh, really some, some Israeli self-defense stuff. And uh, what, what Bishop didn't tell you is, is Bishop could hang y'all. And we saw people, listen, uh, I'm not exaggerating, we've seen people break shoulders, uh, break fingers. We've seen people tear ligaments. Um, the first time we tested together, it was a seven hour test. I lost seven pounds in that test. I gained them back, but I lost seven pounds <laughs> in that test. And by the time it was over, I mean, we needed ibuprofen, we, whatever, whatever was available, right? And so, and so we made it through. And, and there were people who didn't make it past the first 25 minutes. Uh, a, a brother fainted uh, after about 30 minutes. They had to use, you know, their means to bring them back. I mean, it was, it was intense. And so we planned because we made it through the test. We'd plan to get together the next day to go to lunch. Me, J Joshua was, was the youngest one in the bunch, but me, Josh, Odell, Damon, we came barely making it in. I mean, y'all, it, it looked like it hurt for us to think about taking the next step. Remember, we were in some, under the influence of Motrin, whatever we could get our hands on that, you know, legally that could help. We, we you know, we were, we were under the influence of that. We sitting there at the table, hurting. Bishop came in last, and we thinking, man, if we in here looking like this, man, we praying for Bishop. Bishop came walking in there, just as spry. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? And we're sitting there going, wait a minute, this is not fair. How in the world are you the oldest among us, and we hurting, and Bishop came in there like it was no thing. And so all I'm saying is, Y'all don't mess with Bishop. <laughs> Bishop was serious, and so it's good to be here. I thank God for my wonderful wife who's been putting up with me for almost 28 years. It'll be 28 years this May. 
That's my sweetheart, my wife, and my girlfriend. Amen. And I thank God for her. My son is uh, serving as part of the music ministry on the drums. I thank God for him. Amen. And so we praise our awesome God. Listen, I just got one verse to share. Acts chapter 28, verse number 6. If you would turn with me in your Bibles to Acts chapter 28, verse number 6. And while you're turning there, I say this without the fear of contradiction, that Bishop Thomas's leadership among many of us pastors during this pandemic has been priceless. There is no way that many of us would have a single piece of a clarion call, a single bit of clarity to make it through this without the weeks that we spent. And there were times every week we were on a Zoom call. And we right there, y'all, just trying to figure out how in the world we gonna make it through this. And Bishop would give us the kind of leadership that y'all already know Bishop Thomas provides. And so, so Bishop, thank you. Greater Gethsemane, y'all ought to thank God for Bishop Thomas giving guidance and leadership to me and so many other pastors across the country. And so we're grateful to God. Acts chapter 28, just one verse, verse number six. Here's how it reads according to the New King James Version. However, let the church say however. They were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said he was a God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. After they had looked for a long time, and saw no harm come to him. They changed their minds. I want to preach from this title, this thought, this tag, Don't Count Me Out. Man, if you're sitting close enough to somebody where they could tell you were pointing at them, just point to them and tell them, don't count me out. Father, please find pleasure in using this year preacher to preach your word, grant clarity of thought and precision of speech. In Jesus' name, amen. Chances are that most of us, if not all of us, has experienced or will experience being counted out. Sometimes it may be over nonsense. People may give up on you or count you out because of trivial, inconsequential stuff. And it's easy to shake off stuff like that when people count you out for small stuff. You thank God for the revelation. You count your losses. You pick up the pieces. You say your goodbyes and you move on. But there are also those times when we may face circumstances that really do look like there's no way back from that. Situations that look like they'll have you locked in or locked down with no possible way out forever. Circumstances that are filled with uncertainty and perhaps even insecurity. Paul is in one of those circumstances in our text. He barely escaped the close call of becoming a casualty of a crazy storm and a catastrophic shipwreck. Paul badly made it, holding on the pieces. And there's some people in this room right now or worshiping with us virtually right now who know what it's like to feel like you badly made it. To feel like you badly making it because of how severe or how long something's been lasting. We know what it's like to feel like we barely making it through some stuff. He had barely made it through the shipwreck, 
holding on to pieces, he made his way to land. And now Paul finds himself safe from the sea, safe from the shipwreck. But now he's got a poisonous snake attached to his hand. Things look bad. And after all he's already survived, Donald, how could things end up like this? Having survived the shipwreck and the storm, how could things end up like this with a poisonous snake attached to his hand after he'd already survived? And to make matters worse, there's some other people watching all this play out. And this crowd has counted Paul out. The text says that they were expecting him to swell up, pass out, and die. They, they don't expect Paul to make it. But the rest of the story makes it abundantly clear that we ought to be careful about counting people out. If I'm on your street, go ahead, take a few moments, put your hands together, and give God praise for the time people counted you out. But you proved them wrong. L listen, listen, real quick. Don't, don't count me out because you don't know my story. <laughs> oh, man. See, they thought they knew Paul's story. And they had concluded that he must have been a bad man, an evil man, a murderer who's reaping everything he sowed. They, they had concluded that Paul is in this bad situation simply because he's getting what's coming to him. The problem is they really don't know Paul at all. They only know what they see right now. But they don't know Paul's story. They don't know what he had to go through just to get to the island. And there's somebody in here, somebody watching right now who has come to this conclusion concerning the people who have given up on you, the people who have counted you out in light of your challenges. You have come to this conclusion. They must not really know you, and they sure enough don't know your story. I know there have to be at least 300 people who've come to the conclusion that everybody who knows your name still does not know your story. Everybody who knows your title does not know your story. Everybody who knows some details about you still don't know your story. Is there anybody who knows that you owe God some praise on this Sunday afternoon because only God could have brought you through some of the hell, Bishop, and the high wall that you have had to come through. Is there anybody who knows there have been some sleepless nights in your life? There have been some times you didn't have two nickels to rub together to make a dime. There have been some times you were absolutely exhausted and drained, not knowing how in the world you were going to put another step in front of the other, and yet by the grace of God, you still managed to get where you are. There may be some problems where you are and you may have to go deal with some setbacks where you are and you may have to deal with some storms and some struggles where you are but it's already a miracle that you made it this far. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now but there are some people who got this testimony. If God never does another thing for me he's already done enough to prove to me that he is a miracle working God. Somebody knows you owe God praise not just so on a Sunday, but on Monday you still owe God praise because you know you could have lost your mind, but God kept you. Trouble was in your way, but God kept you. You had to struggle along the way, but God kept you. They don't know your story. Just because they like your outfit doesn't mean they know your story. Just because they know your name doesn't mean they know your story. And Paul had come to say, they didn't know Paul's story. They counted this brother out not knowing, here it is, what he'd already come through. There's some people watching and some people in here right now who know you've already come through enough 
to prove to you and anybody who's been watching you, like Bishop said, that God is on your side and that you have a God who will fight your battles and you have a God who has a way of recycling even your bad decisions. I need to talk to about 300 people who know you've made some bad choices and decisions in the past that landed you in some crazy situations and there were some people who had long given up on you. Here it is. God gave you grace and mercy. And when God gave you grace and mercy, it's like God told you, I know it may be partly your fault, but I'm still going to give you a breakthrough that even you don't deserve. And I need 25 people who know you have been the recipient of some breakthroughs you did not deserve. I just need y'all to make the devil real man up in here, up in here, and put your hands together and give God your best praise because there have been times when your back was up against the wall and God brought you through and you owe him the praise and the glory and your neighbors just don't know your story. Paul said, don't, don't count me out because you don't know. You don't know my story. You don't know my story. Sec secondly, listen, don't, don't, don't count me out. Here it is, and I love this. Because God can help me to get through this. <laughs> We're the saints who just believe that God can help you to get through this. Because this is not your first rodeo. This is not your first struggle. This is not your first problem. This is not the first time you've had to lean and depend on God. I need to talk to some people who know what it's like to have to lean and depend on God and you learn the lesson that whatever your this is, God can help you to get through this. I don't know what your this is or what your these are, but is there anybody in here or watching who's got faith enough to believe that no matter how hard it is, how bad it is, or how long it's been going on, he's already proven that he can handle this. If he can handle that, then surely God can help you to get through this. This is not your first challenge. It's not your first trial. You've already seen God get you through, as Bishop said, worse things than this. They had no idea the storms and the struggles that God had already helped Paul to make it through. They tried to stone Paul, but God kept him. They tried to assassinate him, but God kept him. They, they tried to take him out, but God kept him. They beat him up badly but God still healed him and I need about 25 people who've seen God do it in your life before to just stand on your feet and give God your best praise. Guess what? It's been two years of God watching out for us and opening doors for us and making ways for us and blessing us and keeping us. I've already seen God bring us through two years and if God can bring us through two years. God can get you through two months. If God can bring you through two years, God can get you through two weeks. If God can get us through two years, God can keep you through two days. I dare you to high five yourself and give God some praise because you've got a determination that you believe and you trust God can help you to make it through this. Somebody give God some praise in the building. I've got to get out of y'all way. I've got a few more minutes, but I see in the text that, uh, that we ought not count people out and they should not count you out because they don't know your story. And they shouldn't count us out because we know God can get us through this. But then lastly, and I'll be done, don't, don't count me out, Paul would have said, because I know this. God is not finished with me yet. I need you to declare that over your life. God is not finished with me yet. I've taken some bruises, but God is not finished with me yet. I've, I've taken some of the devil's best shots, but God is not finished with me yet. I've got some scars, but God is not finished 
with me and I've been knocked down, but, but God is not finished with me yet. Can, can't you hear Paul? Can't you hear him talking to the crowd who have counted him out? He's got a snake attached to his hand and, and there's some people, some spectators who are expecting him to fail. They are expecting him to swell up, to faint and to die. But here it is, Paul would say, look, when I was on board the ship, before the storm was over and before the ship was torn into pieces, Paul would say, God sent an angel with a promise. Oh, there it is. God, God sent an angel to promise me that I was going to make it all the way to Rome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And right now, I'm no longer in the sea. And I'm no longer on the ship. But I've discovered that the place I am is called Malta. And because the place I am is called Malta, that means that where I am is not where God said, I'm going to make it. Because Malta is not Rome. And the last time I checked, you can stand on the promises of God. And I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, but there's somebody watching. And there's somebody in the building who's got faith enough to believe that if you stand on the promises of God, that God will not let you down. Come on, high five yourself one more time and give God some praise if you really believe that God won't let you down. Uh, I, right now, I'm on Malta. And even though Malta is better than the stormy sea, it's still not Rome. And God promised to me that I was going to make it to Rome. So even though things may be rough right now, don't count me out because God has a way of finishing whatever God starts in our lives. And there's somebody who needs to receive the revelation that when you stand on the promises of God, they may not be fulfilled right away, but you've got to wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Come on, I need somebody in the house who's seen God fulfill his promises in your life. I need you to be a witness and a testimony. I need you to stand on your feet. And if you're able to, go ahead and turn around. Let your neighbor see you. Because your neighbor needs to see what a fulfilled promise looks like. Your neighbor needs to see somebody who waited on the Lord. Times got hard, but they waited. Things got tough, but they waited. People gave up, but they waited. People counted them out, but they waited. And aren't you glad that you waited on the Lord? Because when you wait on the Lord, He will, yes, He will renew your strength. I need about 55 people to put your hands together and give God a praise because you know you serve a God who will keep every promise. Can't you see Paul standing there on the island with the poisonous snake attached to his hand? Other people saying, he'll never make it through this. He'll never come back from this. This is it. It's over for him. He'll never come back. His business will never come back. His marriage will never come back. His children will never come back. His church will never come back. His health will never come back. But I like what the Bible says. The Bible does not say that what they expected to happen ended up happening. But the Bible says that all of a sudden, Paul shook that snake. He shook it off right into the fire. I gotta get out of here, y'all. But I just want to encourage about 60 people that there's some situations, uh, there's some things that have been going on in your life, uh, and you know you're standing on the promise, uh, and God promised you uh, that you were going to make it through this, uh, but you got some situations uh, that seem to be sticking in your life. Uh, you've got some storms uh, that seem like they just won't go away. Uh, I just want to encourage you uh, to shake it off uh, into the fire. Uh, 
Is there anybody, anybody in here who's got your mind made up? There's some stuff you're going to shake off into the fire. Is there anybody standing on the promises of Christ our King through eternal ages? Let his praises ring. Glory in the highest. I'm going to shout and sing. I'm standing on the promises of God. You may be in some situations that look like you'll never make it out of it. But if somebody has the nerve to try to pronounce an ending on you, an ending of your career, an ending of your marriage, an ending of your ministry, you're in good company because they counted Moses out because he killed a man and they counted David out because of his affair with Bathsheba. They counted Jephthah out because his mama was a prostitute. They counted Gideon out because his family did not come from nobility. They counted Samson out because he gave the secret of his strength. They counted Daniel out when he was in the lion's den. They counted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out because they were in the fiery furnace. And they counted Jesus out because they nailed him to a cross. But is there anybody who remembers that early, early on Sunday morning, Jesus got up with all power in his hands. I know they tried to count you out because of your SAT score, but you went to college anyway. They tried to count you out because you had a baby while you were still young, but you did a great job raising your baby. They tried to count you out because you had a financial setback, but now you're in the middle of your comeback. They tried to count you out because of the side of town that you grew up in or the type of trouble that you've been in or the situations you got caught up in. They tried to count you out because of the color of your skin or because of your gender or because you were homeless or because you were unemployed. But look at you now. They tried to count you out because of this pandemic. But by the grace of God, you're still standing, still pressing, still pushing, still praying, still progressing. By the grace of God, you're still in your right mind. You're standing here today because God made a way. Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Now make the devil real mad and declare in your space this will not be the end of me cause my God made me a promise and I'm gonna stand on it I'm gonna stand with him and I'm gonna watch God throw his weight around shout yeah 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 hey hey don't 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 count don't count your neighbor out we are not be in the business of counting each other out you do know that whenever anything happens to you that some folk can see there's more than likely gonna be somebody in the crowd saying they ain't gonna make it through this. <laughs> but I need you to have faith enough to believe and to see, Al, that as long as you got God on your side, as long as you're in relationship to, with the one who's your miracle worker, Lord have mercy, your way maker, your promise keeper, your light in the darkness they may try to count you out but it's too late you've already seen what God is able to do <laughs> and we're here celebrating Jesus today Brandon because though they counted him out he made the biggest comeback ever 
and we get to celebrate communion and remember what Jesus did because though they counted him out, <sighs> Jesus shows us and the word tells us that that same spirit that raised him up is right inside of each and every one of us. So, so, so maybe I need to shift and encourage you not to count yourself out. Don't, don't count yourself out. L -l listen, listen. A -a as a therapist, I know how much our self-talk matters. The things we say to ourselves really do matter. And sometimes we need to check our self-talk. Yeah. I sit down and say, no, no, just because I made that mistake doesn't mean I'm stupid. I'm not stupid. How many of y'all know you're not stupid? <laughs> but we can say things to ourselves at places and spaces where maybe things haven't gone the way we've hoped or expected. And some of the things we may say to ourselves sound like we're counting ourselves out. But I want to encourage and empower and inspire everybody watching and everybody worshiping in the building. Don't let anybody else count you out, but don't count yourself out either. Believe in the God that is in you. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So, so you know what? If you're not going to count yourself out, maybe that means you need to forgive yourself. Come, come on, point to yourself and say, I forgive you. <laughs> maybe, 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 you may need to forgive yourself. And, and you may need to accept yourself with your flaws and all. And trust the God in you to do a work for you, in you, and through you that will bring him glory. Paul survived the snake bite. He made it all the way to Rome, just like God told him he was going to do. What could have killed him didn't. Man, some of y'all miss your cue to shout. What could have didn't. And we only standing here because he made a way. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give me praise. Said you made a way When my back was against the wall And I looked as if it was over Said you there we go. made That's it. Sad, and sad. we're standing here Say, Say it, you Pastor. Made away when our backs were against the wall. When our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was over. Said you made away, and I'm standing here only because you made away. Put those hands together. Thank you, Pastor. You made a way when my back was against the wall. Oh, just say it again, Bush. You made a way, God. Somebody here is a witness. God has made a way. You made a way. Oh, yes. He never fails to. From day, oh yes, it'll never, never, never lose 
its power. see disciples seated at a reclining on the floor at a table a meal in front of them and the master pausing we see it God taking a cup breaking bread and letting them know what he would do we come tonight God so we never forget and we are always grateful Bless us in these next 30 days that we can be closer than we were in the last 30 days. Take away our excuses. Surround our fear with faith. And let us march valiantly to the mission you are assigning us. Give us courage now as we stand and come to your table. Forgive us of our sin and stand us up in your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. The blood, the blood that gives me strength. That gives me strength. From day to day. From today. It will never, 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 never lose. It'll never lose its power. Yeah, it reaches, it reaches to the highest mountain. Oh, yes, it does.
night Jesus was betrayed, it was firmly fixed in his mind what must be endured, what must happen. That a cross was in front of him. He did not want the disciples to count him out. And he did not want any of us to ever count ourselves out. He sat with the group that had been with him all these years and began to tell them that a new chapter would be beginning. Most of us are afraid of new chapters. And so the Lord did something to remind them of the old chapter. He said, do this in remembrance of me. When the new gets hard, go back to the old. Y'all miss that. When the present is too tough, go back to the bridge that brought you over. When you can't see your way, go back to when I walked with you in the way. And he said to them, take this bread and break it and eat this. This is my body broken for you. He wanted them to realize that no one was taking his life. That he was not beaten nor defeated. He was in charge. He was doing what he said would be done. Nobody was beating him. No evil was winning. Don't count him out. He said, take this cup. 24 hours they would see his body laid open, blood streaming down from thorns in his head, a cross on his back and then nails are hammered through his hands and a spear later pushed through his side. They would see blood. He said, but understand this blood that you see is what I'm doing just for you. It is the New Testament in my blood shed for all for the remission of sins. They're not beating me. I'm dying for you. As often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you show forth my death until I come again. And new psalmist, he's coming back again. We do as they did that night. And the Bible says, they sang a hymn and they went out. They sang a hymn and marched from that room through the Kidron Valley up to the wine press at Gethsemane. And there he prayed and began the journey. Thank you, Greater Gethsemane, for being with us tonight. Thank you, members and officers and leaders and all for being here tonight. We're going home. Sing us out, choir.
keep you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance round about you. And the Lord give you peace. See you Tuesday night here on prayer call. Thursday night in Bible study. Shake somebody's hand. Ushers, you can lead us out.